Recently, I had the idea of making custom modding tools. Not only does it allow you guys to make your own content, but it allows me to make content faster. Making tools like item designers or behavior tree editors makes it really fun and easy to add new content to my game. People are always asking me what game engine I use. Well, let me introduce you to the sponsor of today's video, GameMaker. I've been using GameMaker now for several years, and I decided to use it to develop Earthward because of how easy it is to make 2D games with it. Whether you're a beginner or about to graduate with a bachelor's degree in computer science like myself, GameMaker is a really great tool for game development. You can develop for free and export on every single platform. And if you're ready to sell your games commercially, you can get a license with a one-time purchase. No need to manage another set of subscriptions. Not only can you make games, but you can make your own sprites and animations within the editor itself. Or you can find free assets on the GameMaker marketplace. You can choose between visual coding or GML scripting. GameMaker is even looking into adding JavaScript and c -sharp support in the future. There are so many new updates and features the GameMaker team is working on right now. It's the perfect time to start learning. Make sure to check out GameMaker with the link in the description. It's free to use and easy to start making games. I mean, just look at all these games that I've made with GameMaker. So to make Earthward moddable, I needed a way to serialize my items and life forms into JSON. GameMaker works best if you're serializing things in JSON or through objects. It's really the only way to go about modding a game in GameMaker, otherwise you'd have to write like your own scripting language. It's prone to error and it takes a longer time to develop, especially with so many different properties. And when it comes to modding, it's even more annoying for you guys. You don't really know how everything means or how all the code was set up. Defining the behavior using something called a schema helps stream line my development process and reduce almost all chances of error. And one of these reasons why it's so nice is because in the JSON editor itself, I can define enums, which means that for things like color, AI, weapon type, tool type, I don't have to type in a string value, I can just have a drop down of all of the different enum boxes that I want. And usually this isn't possible when I'm just editing raw JSON. There's a pretty big chance that I would end up misspelling something and it would take me ages to figure out why this one particular value is completely wrong. But of course you can disable this schema mode by just checking the checkbox and then adding your own custom field. That way it also works as just a multi-purpose JSON editor. There's also these cool checkboxes for boolean values. It's honestly just much more satisfying. Even better, you can create new JSON files using templates. This means I can make new enemies, NPCs, and items incredibly quickly. It displays all the images related to the name of the JSON file, so you can see the animations of what you're making. So it's not just a JSON editor, but also an entity creator. I found it's also pretty handy for adding in all of the quips and all of the dialogue, because I have everything defined in JSON for like what the player says when they react to something. That way I can add language support in the future for Spanish, Portuguese. Earth Edit is incredibly lightweight and it's written in C Sharp using Windows Forms. It was my first time making a tool like this and I have to say it's given me a lot more ideas on how to make even better tools for streamlining my development process. The next step for Earthward is making enemy AI. I plan on making a behavior tree editor for my game so that way I can really easily create dynamic AI. And of course, that means you guys can too. I already have a basic one working for my C-sharp game engine, so I can only imagine how awesome it would be to have a dedicated one for Earthward. Okay, so I'm recording this after I've actually already made my behavior tree editor for Earthward. This is kind of what it looks like. Uh, I can talk a little bit more about this in a future video, but this basically allows you guys to use a bunch of pre-existing nodes that I've added to the game. So it means you can pretty much just like code your own AI with what exists in the game, which is really, really cool. And it's so much fun to just like mess around and see what kind of funny things you can make happen with all the different nodes. Something I've been thinking a lot about lately is how I can make the tedious parts of programming more fun. I think this is a great way to do it. Everything has been super busy lately since I am a full-time student and also working, but with final exams almost over, I will have some time to make games. My goal is to have a finished game loop by the end of this summer. Hopefully by then I'll also be ready to start a fundraiser to keep development going, since we all know indie game development is infamously one of the worst financial decisions you can make as a game dev. But I really do believe I have something fun here, and I'm going to do my best to bring that experience to you guys as soon as I can. With that said, here's some of the cool changes I've made in the past couple of months. The Alchemist actually sells you things now. He gives you bottles and a few other potions that you can make. In the future, there will be more Alchemist NPCs that are a little bit different and they'll be selling you different potions. But you can craft these potions if you purchase bottles and find the right materials. So that means there's more than one way to get a potion. 
You can craft some of the placeable tiles now again. I had actually added furnace and anvil tiles in the past versions of the game, but decided to remove them in lieu of just adding NPCs that just sold the items from a shop instead of having to craft the actual tile. But then I decided that while the game is actually playing and you're not in a village, you can't really craft any of these bars or anything like that. So I decided to make it so you could craft furnaces and anvils, so that way in the actual gameplay itself, you can craft all these things without an NPC. Campfires can now let you cook different items, so things like mushrooms, berries, and a whole bunch of other food items. You can try and see what works and what doesn't. Some things might be good, some things might be bad. That's up for you to find out. NPCs now have random names, so one time you might get Odysseus, and next time you might just get John the Merchant. Which, speaking of the Merchant, the Merchant now sells six pieces of random garbage instead of three. I think the RNG elements of this game are what make it really fun, so I kind of want to lean into that more. I mentioned localization before, but now I actually have it implemented. This means that I'm going to need people's help very soon in actually localizing all of the text for different languages. So far, I plan to add support for Spanish, Russian, Portuguese, French, German, and Italian. Of course, I can always add more localization in the future. It's really, really easy and straightforward. All I need to do is find someone to help me translate it. And here are a couple of things I want to add in the future. Sort of like my previous game, Bitlands, I wanted to add a way to have companions in the game. And this means that when you die, you can unlock these new companions. And when you start a new run, you can select a companion that you want to accompany you on your journey. These are going to work in tandem with a new level up system and skill system. Previously, I had a skill tree you could use to help increase movement and combat capabilities. But then I decided that with the new advent of races in our game, that the level up system should be related to that somehow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it so that each race has different abilities. And whenever you level up, you unlock those abilities, which I think will generate more combinations of unique playstyles. Overall, I'm really excited to continue development on this game, and I'm having a lot of fun developing Earthward. Thank you all so much for watching. If you guys want to support my content and future games, you can go ahead and join my Discord with the link in the description. You can also subscribe over there on Discord for early access, and also access to beta versions of Earthward, or I guess more like pre-alpha versions of Earthward right now. It is always nice to have more testers. I'll see you in the next video.